Hello there, welcome to the June 2018 applied paper here. We're looking at question 10. Final question of this paper here. So a boy throws a ball at a target. At the instant when the ball leaves the boy's hand, the point A, the ball is two meters above the horizontal ground and is moving with speed U at an angle alpha above the horizontal. In the subsequent motion, the highest point reached by the ball is three meters above the ground. The target is modeled as the point T as shown in figure four. The ball is modelled um, as a particle moving freely under gravity. Using the model, show that u squared equals 2g over sine squared alpha. And first of all, when I saw this problem here, I thought, how on earth are you going to prove this from this information here? Well, the key bit of information that we need to use to prove part A is that the highest point is um, 3 metres above the ground, 1 metre further higher than it was um, at the start. So what we're going to do here is we're going to do a bit of vertical suvat. So vertical suvat. So just considering the vertical components of this question, uh, the displacement S we want as 1 metre, we want it to be 1 metre higher than it was from the start. The speed, the initial speed, now the initial diagonal speed here is u, but we're only working with the vertical component here. So if we now resolve that, it's going to be sine alpha times by that speed of u, so it's going to be u sine alpha. The final speed at this point here, the final vertical speed at the highest point is going to be zero. Acceleration is going to be caused by gravity, so that's going to be minus g, and we're not particularly interested in the time. So the formula is going to be v squared equals u squared plus 2as. So it's going to be 0 equals u squared sine squared alpha minus 2g times 1. So let's move that 2g1 onto the other side, so it's 2g. And it's going to be u squared sine squared alpha divided by the sine squared and we get 2g over sine squared alpha equals u squared. And there we are. So it's a vertical suvat using this coordinate here um, that we need to use to prove part A. Let's move on to part B. Now part B is a big one, nine marks, so we expect a lot of work here. The point T is at a horizontal distance 20 metres away from the starting point A, so 20 metres horizontal and a height of 0 0.75 above the ground. Uh, the ball reaches T without hitting the ground. Find the size of angle alpha. Okay, so uh, what we're going to be doing here is we're going to be using this position coordinate T in both vertical and horizontal suvat. So to start with vertical suvat, So our displacement, S, is going to be um, minus 1.25. Its initial speed, U, was its vertical suvat, so that would be U sine alpha. Uh, v, we're not particularly interested in. We're not particularly interested in the speed at V. Um, a is going to be um, minus G. And for both the vertical and the horizontal suvat, the time that it reaches t is going to be equal. So t equals t, I'm just going to write. And that's important we use that. So uh, let's now move on to the horizontal suvat. Now, in fact, we don't need to really use horizontal suvat in this question here because there's not going to be any acceleration going to the left or right. It's just going to be horizontal distance equals speed times time. So, yeah, unfortunately, we've got two different versions of what S is, but this is distance equals speed times time. So the distance here is 20 meters equals the speed, which will be, well, let's resolve it, it's going to be cos alpha for this part here times u. So it's going to be u cos alpha times by t. Now what I'm going to do now is I'm going to rearrange this second equation to get t and then I'm going to plug this into this position here um, for the vertical suvat. So that will mean we'll get rid of the letter t and we've now just got u and 
uh, cos alpha or sine alpha uh, in the question because and we can do this because it's going to reach point t at the same time both horizontally when the distance is 20 and vertically when the distance is minus 1.25. So what I'm now going to do is use this vertical SUVAT information to make a formula. And I think the formula is going to be S equals UT plus half AT squared. So let's substitute all of these components in. It's going to be minus 1.25 equals U, which is U sine alpha, times by T, which is going to be 20 over U cos alpha and in fact here we'll see that the u's cancel out and we just get a tan alpha uh, in that component there and then it's going to be plus half times minus g times t squared so that's going to be 400 over u squared cos squared alpha right so this looks quite difficult so let's tidy it up a little bit so it's going to be minus 1.25 equals 20 tan alpha minus g over, it would cancel out the 2 and the 400 there, so it's now just 200. So it's going to be 200 g, and then that's going to be over u squared cos squared alpha. Okay. What we now have to do is get rid of this u squared. And if we just have a look on the previous page, we have an expression for what u squared is equal to. u squared is equal to 2g over sine squared alpha. So that's what I'm now going to use in the next line of working here. u equals, no, u squared is equal to 2g over sine squared alpha. So it's going to be minus 1.25 equals 20 tan alpha. And then let's now be careful because u squared is on the bottom. So it's going to be the 2g that's on the bottom. So it's going to be minus 200g. Um, the sine squared will be on the top now because it's on the bottom of that denominator, but it's on the bottom of that denominator. So when it's on the bottom of denominator again, it's going to move on to the top. And then it's going to be 2g on the bottom. And now we can just cancel this out. G and G cancel out that and that cancel out. So it's now just 100 sine squared alpha um, over cos squared alpha. So that's going to make it tan squared alpha. So what I'm now going to do is I'm going to rearrange that all onto the left hand side. So it's going to be 100 tan squared alpha minus 20 tan alpha minus 1.25 equals 0. And when we type that into the polynomial solver mode in our calculator, we're going to get tan alpha equals a quarter, or tan alpha equals minus 1 over 20. Tan alpha equals minus 1 over 20. Now we know that this angle is in between 0 to 90 degrees, so therefore we'll solve both of these equations for only solutions in between 90, 0 to 90 degrees. So we'll do tan alpha, so inverse tan of 0 0.25, and that will give us 14.03. 14 14.03, .03, uh, 14 degrees. And then the tan inverse of minus 1 over 20 will give us a negative angle. And then if we try and make it positive, we're going to get something bigger than 90 degrees. So no solutions in between 0 to 90 for the second equation there. So tan alpha is a quarter will give us 14.03 degrees or 14.0 to three significant figures. Oof, there we are. So that's our answer to part B. Let's now move on to part C and part D. States one limitation of the model that could affect your answer to part B. Well, we've got a number of different answers here. I'll just read them out from the mark scheme. Uh, there'll be air resistance. The ball will have dimension. There might be spin on the ball and there might be effects of wind. And if you're a cricket fan, there might be swing on the ball as well, which may affect the, uh, the destination of the, or the, the travel of the ball. 
Moving on to part D, find the time taken for the ball to travel from A to T. So, um, so what I'm going to use here is if we go back to this page here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this formula forward, the u squared equals 2g over sine squared uh, alpha formula, and I'm also going to bring forward this formula here. So this formula here will come forward, and this formula here will also come forward. So let's go back to that page that the question was on. So it's going to be um, u squared equals 2g over sine squared alpha and then the other one was the distance equals speed times time formula which was um, 20 equals u cos alpha um, times t. So the first thing I'll do is I'll work out what u is equal to that's going to equal the square root of 2g over sine squared alpha and then I'll just plug it into this position here uh, so that's going to be 20 equals the square root of 2g. Now we know sine squared will be square rooted to sine. And then that will be times by cos alpha and then that will equal t. So that will make us a 1 over tan. And then when I move on to the other side, it will actually make us a perfect tan. So it would be 20 tan alpha divided by 2g square rooted. And that will give us the time... And then if I plug all of that into the calculator, uh, tan alpha is going to be a quarter. So a quarter of 20 is 5. So it's 5 over root 2g. So that would probably be the exact answer. We may want to rationalize our denominator maybe. But if we do type it into the calculator, we're going to get 1.13 seconds. Oof, that was a very, very difficult question. That one, 15 marks in total. It was the final question on this paper, question 10. And there we are. So that's the answer for question 10 there. And uh, hopefully you found this video helpful and maybe you might want to move on to the June 2019 applied paper for some more practice questions. Thanks very much for watching.